Hi everyone. In this Chapter 16 Study Guide video, we'll work an income tax problem involving an installment sale. For its first year of operations, Smith Corporation reported pre-tax accounting income for 20x1 of $100,000 except for additional income of $40,000 from installment sales of property and $5,000 municipal bond interest. The installment sales income will be reported for tax purposes in 20x2, $10,000, and in 20x3, $30,000. The enacted tax rates are 40% for 20x1 and 20x2, and 35% for 20x3. You can refer to illustration 16-11 in your textbook for help with these calculations. So pause your video, turn to illustration 16-11 in your textbook, then start the video again to calculate pre-tax accounting income for 20x1. Pre-tax accounting income for 20X1 is $145,000. That's the $100,000 mentioned in the problem, plus the additional amount of $40,000 from the installment sale and $5,000 municipal bond interest. Calculate taxable income, taxes payable, and deferred tax liability or deferred tax asset and specify which it is. Is it a deferred tax liability or a deferred tax asset? The current year is 20X1. Pre-tax accounting income is $145,000 minus municipal bond interest, which is simply not taxable ever. It's not a temporary difference, it is a permanent difference. Also subtract out the installment sale income, which is reportable on the financial statements, but is not taxable until cash is received in future years. So taxable income is $145,000 minus $5,000 municipal bond interest, minus $40,000 installment sales, $100,000, times the enacted tax rate for the 20x1 year of 40% equals taxes payable of 40%. The municipal bond interest, as I said before, is a permanent difference. It does not create a tax, um, deferred tax liability or deferred tax asset. It's a permanent difference. But the installment sale income reduces taxable income below financial statement income in 20x1, but will increase taxable income in future years in the problem gives us in 20x2, we'll recognize $10,000 of the $40,000 um, gain on the installment sale. And in 20x3, we will recognize $30,000 of the $40,000 gain on the installment sale. Multiply those times the tax rates in effect for those years, 40% for 20x2 and 35% for 20x3 and you have a combined 14,500 deferred tax liability. Number C, write the journal entry to book the 20X1 tax provision. The tax provision has to debit income tax expense. The problem is we don't know how much 
the income tax expense is for 20x1 till we figure out how much the income taxes payable are and we do know that that's $40,000 credit and we need to do a T account on the deferred tax liability to find out what it takes to move its beginning balance to its correct ending balance. That could be a debit or a credit. In this example, we need to credit the deferred tax liability account for $14,500 to move its beginning balance up to its ending $14,500 credit, $14, credit balance. Income tax expense is a plugged number. What does it take to make this journal entry balance? When you credit taxes payable for $40,000, and you end up crediting deferred tax liability for $14,500, that means income tax expense must be $54,500 to make this journal entry balance. Well, that's all for this problem. In our next video, we'll work another income tax problem involving depreciation. See you next time.